uh, thank you all for joining us uh, virtually today for the fellowship.art artist emergency response program uh, funded both by generator and the American family insurance. Um, uh, this webinar is specifically for identifying philanthropic and institutional grants and awards and other funding sources for artists. Uh, yesterday's webinar, we talked about uh, things like the CARES Act and uh, unemployment benefits. Uh, this will gear be geared towards a slightly different topic of uh, if you're already employing some of those other grants and loans, uh, what are some that are designed specifically for artists in need right now? Um, and as I mentioned, this is um, sponsored by the American Family Insurance Institute for Corporate and Social Impact. So thank you again to them. And uh, you know, we are all struggling with our webinars right now, um, but here is our call-in info uh, and our webinar ID. And if you have questions during today's webinar, uh, you can type into the Q&A box uh, and type in your questions and send them to the host. Any unanswered questions will be sent to the speaker to answer after the webinar. Please do not send in your questions anonymously so that we can ensure we can get back to you with the right answer. Um, and send any emails to maureen at generator.com during the webinar with questions as well. And again, technology issues. Uh, due to the number of people on today's webinar, we will unfortunately uh, not be able to solve all of your technology issues. Uh, we will record the webinar and share it uh, with all of the registered people today uh, after the program. And I would like to welcome our speaker for today, Kanita Hickman, uh, who is uh, oh, who is here uh, from Imagine MKE. Uh, and she will be here to speak about all sorts of different grants and opportunities for you. Uh, Kanita, do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, thank you, Maureen, for um, having me. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks so much for um, taking some time today to um, be a part of this webinar. Um, I am going to share my screen. So this is where it gets awkward because now you have to watch it. Okay, cool. I think we're good. So um, as Maureen mentioned, I work for um, Imagine MKE. I'm their director of artist support and outreach. And Imagine MKE is the Chamber of Commerce for Arts and Culture here in Milwaukee. So we work to amplify, um, connect, and convene. Um, throughout the arts and culture sector. And my work specifically as Director of Artist Support and Outreach is to support artists across the spectrum. So, of course, visual artists like you, um, musicians, performing artists, podcasters, um, filmographers, the, the entire gamut. And it's really in making sure that folks are supported that their work is being amplified, that um, we're able to connect them to opportunities as much as possible or convene them with opportunities as well to ultimately help them um, be able to make money and be able to stay in Milwaukee if they choose to, knowing that we have a vibrant um, sector where folks can make money and folks can be visible doing what they love to do. And so that kind of leads me into the first portion of what I'll be talking about today, which is when I started working for Imagine um, in October, through my conversations with artists, um, some of the feedback that I was getting was, okay, but Kenita, how do I get healthcare? Or how do I um, make sure I'm able to eat? And, you know, those types of things. And so there's two things that I think are super immediate that I want to highlight right now. And it's food. Um, I know in previous webinars, there's been conversation around unemployment um, and the SBA um, paycheck protection, um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about food. So I don't want anybody going hungry, like don't go hungry, you don't need to go hungry. One thing you can do immediately is the Tandem restaurant down on like 18th and Fond du Lac, 
they are giving away meals to the community um, from like 11 to four. So you can see that um, here on the website now. So um, certainly for folks who are able to donate, do that. But um, if you're looking for meals on their Facebook page, they publish their um, website every day. There's usually some type of vegetarian or vegan option as they're now starting to work with other restaurants who are donating food um, to Tandem so that they can serve meals as well. And so that's something you can do immediately right now to make sure that you're taken care of um, and that you're not hungry because that's really, really important as we move forward. The other thing that I'll mention is um, food share. And so food share is basically like what they called back in the day, like food stamps, except now you have a card. Um, you can use it at all of the stores. I'm gonna tell you when I was a public ally, I was eligible for food share and I used it. And um, as a single person with no children, I was able to get the max amount, which was $200. Um, but it went to groceries, it went to groceries. So the unemployment, um, the not the unemployment but my my stipend that i got from public allies was then able to be used solely on bills and other things that um the uh, food share card did not cover um one key component of that is that um again when i first started imagine mke i did not talk about food share um having worked in workforce development i knew that for artists that would be really difficult for um you to be able to attain without giving up your art practice um, because the state of Wisconsin does not necessarily recognize, oh, I was working on a mural and that's why I didn't look for a job. So that work requirement that you be working a certain amount of hours or that you be looking for work um, is no longer there. And so now it's open for entrepreneurs, creatives, um, to be able to apply and not have to substantiate like, oh, well, I'm actually an artist, but I'm not selling as much artwork right now. And so I wanna encourage everybody to go to Wisconsin, um, access.wisconsin.gov, apply for those benefits so that you can um, receive food share. Um, so again, that you don't have to go hungry. I think that's really, really key. And now that it's available for folks and it, you don't have that work requirement, um, that's a that's a barrier that's been removed for you um, as it relates to um, COVID-19. So please do that um, so that you can eat. Please do that. Um, all right. So now moving into um, artist funds and grants. And so um, yesterday I did this presentation or something similar for Backline. And it was disappointing because there aren't a ton of music um, or musician focused um, grants. Um, that's not the case for visual artists. And so I'm gonna show you what I have. Um, I'm sharing the screen so that you can look at the, um, the URLs as well. Feel free to ask questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, let's start with lindensculpturegarden.org. If you are not signed up to their newsletter, again, I would encourage you to do so. Polly um, sends out, I wanna say she sends out um, an email probably once a week, maybe once every two weeks, but I'm almost confident it's once a week that I get something from her, especially now that we're in this COVID-19 space. And so just to give you um, an idea of what's here, a lot of artists emergency um, resources. So. Um, and some of these, some of these are going to show up on other sites that I show you today. Um, others will not though. And so um, definitely get connected here, um, sign up for the newsletter so that you can kind of see all of the grants that you might be eligible for in real time. Um, so we will leave there. And the, first, the next one will be COVID-19 freelance artist resource dot wordpress.com that's a whole lot so i'm gonna keep it on the screen for a little bit um but COVID 19 and freelance artists is who this is for so here it's specifically designed for freelance artists those supported um those interested in supporting the independent artist community and then it gives you who it includes um so teaching artists craft artists um 
this is this is for you so this is a list of free resources and honestly it was something that we were sending out um when COVID-19 first hit this was the first link that we were sending out to folks um to get connected to other opportunities that were available so pretty comprehensive um quite a few um opportunities on here you know because this is happening in real time you just kind of got to go through and sort um for what you need so emergency funding is here And so you can look through everything that's that's here. Um, the other one that I find of interest is working, gathering, and teaching online. And this is kind of part of why I talked about um, food insecurity at first. I definitely think that um, it's great that we're having conversations around what are people's most pressing needs right right now. Um, but I also think we need to start thinking about what does this look like for six weeks from now? So once my needs are met, once I'm confident that I'm not gonna get kicked out of my place and whatever, um, how do I create opportunities to make money? Um, and so here's some opportunities here. So thinking about how do you bring your work um, into a digital space in real time? Um, this is going to be an opportunity to do that. So I think once, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, once that that bottom portion is met, that first portion is met, I think this is going to be the next step. And so certainly look for emergency funds. Also look for opportunities um, to uh, make money in the short to mid future, um, short term to midterm future. Um, this is going to be a good resource. So again, COVID-19 freelance artist resource .com. and I feel like I saw a couple questions maybe I did maybe I didn't um nope okay so this is the one that another one that we're also talking about in the office because it is incredibly comprehensive um and it's an extension of the COVID-19 um freelance artist resource that I just showed you and so this is artistrelief.org it is a coalition of national um arts orgs who have come together to put together um you know pool their resources and so they are giving up to granting up to five thousand dollars um there is no um residency restriction on this and so folks can apply um so again you'll see here we'll distribute five thousand dollar um grants to artists facing dire financial emergencies um here's some of the um eligibility requirements and so again i think that this is a good opportunity um as well and i think it's super duper important and actually I take that back. This is not the website that's super comprehensive that I like, but this is a website that we have been talking um, to people about at Imagine MKE because, um, because I'm getting rid of all of that, because um, we don't, uh, right now, Imagine MKE, our uh, resource is currently, our grant is currently closed. And so um, we don't, we need to start sending people other places while we work to fulfill the rest of um, our waiting list. So that's what we're looking at doing. Okay, so that's artistrelief.org. The next one is Artists Fellowship. So this one provides emergency aid to professional visual artists and their families in times of sickness, natural disaster, bereavement, or unexpected extreme hardship this one specifically though is for folks who are dealing with immediate medical emergencies so this is not necessarily um COVID-19 related but it also could be if you are somebody who's facing an immediate medical emergency in response to that so this isn't necessarily um an emergency relief fund for folks who are losing income as a result um, so again, here's some of the eligibility requirements here. Um, here's who's not eligible. And then it goes into um, how to apply. 
And so I don't recall seeing any income, any um, residency restrictions. So again, this is an opportunity too. So yeah, so the next one is, let's see. New York Foundation for the Arts. Um, now this one was really interesting because it's just a list of places. And give me one second. So this one, there are some on here that have ink that have residency restrictions, but there are some on here who that don't. So again, this is going to be an opportunity where you'll need to look through based on what your need is. When I first looked at it, I was like, oh, this is probably just for New York artists. It's not. But some of them are restricted to other parts of the country. And so you definitely want to um, look through this, but this is another opportunity as well. So again, you can look down. And again, it's a lot, a lot of opportunities. So comprehensive in terms of different folks who are um, offering, offering grants. Creative Capital is another one that is a convening space of multiple opportunities, multiple funding streams. So online workshops here, national grants that you can be eligible for. This one is actually one that we're gonna talk about in a moment. So this is one that I pulled up as well that I thought was really interesting. And actually I've received quite a few emails sharing this particular grant. Um, Artist Relief, um, again, Another one that we've talked about today. Okay, I see a question. Accepting grants will not affect your you being able to get food share. No, no, that will not. So that was a question that came in from Carly. Do you know if accepting grants would affect the food stamps? No, it has nothing to do with that because the grants is not necessarily earned income. Um. So I hope that answers that question. Okay. So I think, I don't th think those questions are for me. So, all right. So again, for a lot of these, it's gonna be a matter of looking through. Surf is, plus is another one I believe I have on my screen to share today. But if I don't, actually I don't see the tab. So we will pull that up and talk about that one as well. Art is charitable fund. So this is not um, a residency restricted. They can't, the fund cannot pay artists directly. Again, this is specifically emergency medical bills and they're paying them directly to your medical provider. Um, so not, this is not a fund, again, for loss of income due to COVID-19. It's for emergency medical bills. Um, and some folks may be experiencing that as a result of COVID-19. So I thought it was really important to bring this up as well, because I know for other funds, um, for our fund, we, our restrictions were a little looser. It was like, look, we got $500 up to $500. What do you need right now? Um, and so, um, we tried to work in that space. For others, it's going to be for living expenses. It's going to be for income loss. Again, for this one, it's going to be for emergency medical bills that they're going to pay directly to your medical provider. And that was artists. I've already forgotten it. I'm sorry, guys. So this one, COVID-19 resources for artists. So artworkarchive.com. This is another comprehensive one. And as I mentioned, um, Yep, the, the other one I believe was Artist Charitable Fund. As I mentioned, on some of these pages, you're going to see funds um, that repeat um, that are national funds, though. They likely have more money 
um, to spread around. So, but also probably um, a much larger group of folks applying. So consider that. This is another one that I found really interesting that I believe is on my list to talk about because it's another one that um, supports unforeseen medical expenses. So United States by region. So again, pretty comprehensive. Um, you should be able to sort through and um, apply for as many that you're eligible for. Arts COVID big, li big list. This is the one that I really like because again, it's an opportunity for you to sort through what you need. So what are you worried about? Emergency funded. So you can scroll down and it has it listed almost in alphabetical order. And you can just sort through and look through. And I mean, and I would encourage folks to take the time to look through um, applying for some of these is going to be a little bit um, time consuming. However, if you're eligible for it and you have a need for it, I would do it. The other thing is temporary and remote work opportunities. Again, I'm thinking about what does this look like post? So four weeks from now, six weeks from now, when maybe the restrictions are lifted, but people don't feel comfortable going outside, what does that look like? Cool. Say the names twice of the websites. Got it. So this one is artscovid.org. So again, artscovid.org. So temporary and remote work opportunities, but there's also here remote working. There's also online teaching. And again, I think that as creatives, we all got to start thinking about what happens four to six weeks from now when some of the restrictions are lifted, but people still don't feel comfortable um, engaging with the public. So we may still be operating virtually and digitally. And what does that look like um, for you as artists, for me as a creative on the administrative business end of it? So again, that's artscovid.org. All right. And then. Artist Relief Tree is a relief fund for artists affected by cancellations due to COVID. So here's an opportunity. So here is where you can donate. And I'm gonna see if I can pull up the screen where you can actually apply. Mm -hmm. I was just on here yesterday. Nope. So they might not be accepting applications now because I can't see where you can actually apply, but the website is artistrelieftree.com. Yep, and new requests for funding are currently not being accepted. Same with us at Imagine MKE. We had a ton of people um, reach out and we want to, we want to fund the rest of that that uh, backlist before we were able to open up it up again, if we open it up again. So I do think, though, um, that keeping this one on your radar is good, just in the event that they're able to raise the rest of the capital that they need. Um, this is a good one to kind of keep on the radar. This is one I mentioned earlier. So for me, um, I don't often work with a lot of older, I don't see a lot of older artists come into my office at Imagine MKE. So I was super excited to see that there is an emergency relief grant for um, women artists over 40. And to see that this was not um, restricted to residency. Um, so the name of the grant itself is Anonymous Was a Woman. So again, Anonymous was a woman emergency grant, and they're looking to distribute um, a total of $250,000, um, so up to $2,500 for each grantee. Now, in my experience, administrating the, the, ad, be, administering the grant, um, our relief fund, 
everybody doesn't apply for five hundred dollars. Um, folks will apply for fifty or one hundred or whatever. Um, and so I imagine the same is going to happen here. Um, so yeah, so for any artists who are on the call right now, who are women over 40, this is a really unique opportunity where they're looking specifically for artists like you. If you know of artists um, who are over 40 and women, um, please send this information over. And again, the grant is called Anonymous Was a Woman Emergency Grant. Mm. Okay. So we will come out of this one. And then this is another one that I talked about that is, so the Rauschenberg Emergency Grant will provide five, um, will pro provide artists up with up to 5,000 for unforeseen medical expenses. Again, this is specifically for medical expenses, um, including hospital bills, insurance, co-pays, prescription drugs, potentially dental work, um, not necessarily connected to COVID-19. However, we know that people are going to see hospital bills as a result of COVID-19. So this um, is an opportunity and it's a one-time grant, um, but um, it's for visual and media artists and choreographers. So, um, and again, it's called the Rauschenberg Emergency Grant. So R-A-U, S C H E N B E R G. And then finally, the Surf Plus, um, the Artist Safety Net. So, here for emergency assistance, um, it talks a little bit about what's covered, what isn't covered. Let's go here. Actually, I should have gone to get relief. So let's go back. Get help now. And so this website is called surfplus.org. So it's C-E-R-F plus P-L-U-S dot org. So, relief resources, and this is for artists in all disciplines. And it allows you to sort through where you, you need to be. So, relief from arts organizations, here. And you can sort through based on your discipline. So, again, here's multiple opportunities. Um, visual artists and all artists. And then all artists here. And so that's what I have. I see we have a couple questions. Okay, so Melissa Dorn said, I believe the anonymous was a woman grant is not accepting submissions. It had a very short submission window. Thank you for sending that over, Melissa. Um, I answered that live. Were there any other questions or Maureen, was there any additional information that um, or context you thought I needed to, to share? Uh, no, I think you did an amazing job covering. There are certainly a lot of resources out there. Uh, I think the challenge for artists will be kind of going through all of them and finding the ones that best fit their needs at this point. Uh, I do want to let all of you know that uh, we are compiling all of the resources that Kanita is talking about today, and we will have all of those websites and links for you on our resources page uh, on fellowship.art. Uh, on our website there. Uh, also, I do want to encourage all of you to sign up for our one-on-one -on -one office hours. Uh, you can, again, go to the fellowship.art website, uh, click on office hours, and I can spend some time, I think it's 20 minutes, just chatting with you about what your personal needs are uh, and how we can best uh, help connect you with some resources. 
Uh, and I am actually going to go back to sharing my screen, I think. Um, uh, hang on one second. Uh, Uh, just so that I can show you um, a couple other resources. Um, so we will share uh, some of these resource links with you as well, uh, and I will compile the ones that Kanita mentioned today. Um, and thank you again for listening to our webinar today. Uh, please sign up for office hours if you have any questions, or just shoot me an email at maureen at generator.com. Uh, and please tune in tomorrow. Uh, I will be talking about uh, how to take your art practice online. So everything from updating your Instagram account to your website to looking for art e-commerce uh, websites to show your work on uh, to how to uh, have an online exhibition. Uh, so that will be tomorrow. Uh, and then Thursday's webinar uh, will be uh, mental health and wellness. Um, so stay tuned for updates in your inbox uh, for those as well. Uh, and that's it for today. Oh, uh, I have a couple more things I wanted to add. Oh, okay. And we got also one question that came through. So. Yep, I saw the question too. So um, a couple things that I, I want to add is certainly um, if I can be a continued support, a continued resource for you, um, I can be reached uh, at via email at k. Hickman, H-I-C-K-M-A-N, at imaginemke.org. So again, K Hickman, H-I-C-K-M-A-N, at imaginemke.org. Um, so again, through COVID and beyond, we really wanna be able to support um, all artists across the sector. And if there's anything I can do in helping to connect you to resources. I am still working full time. And so please put me to work so that we can make sure that we're helping the community um, of artists um, as we move forward. If you do nothing else today, please apply for food share. Um, again, that's really important. Do it. Um, and also get on LinkedIn. So I know I heard Maureen mention, you know, how to move your work online. Um, I think LinkedIn is an incredibly powerful tool in terms of um, the affluence level is different. Um, and so there is an expectation for folks on LinkedIn, they're either doing business or they're selling a business. But um, most of the workshops that I've done through my company that have come through LinkedIn were paid gigs. So I would encourage you um, to consider that as a tool in your toolbox as well as you look to moving your work online. Thank you for that. Yes, I think that's a really good important message to have out there as well. Uh, yes, and it looks like we have one additional question um, about, so yes, unemployment insurance uh, for self-employed people isn't available yet for us. Uh, you're in the process of applying for food share. Uh, they're waiting for your unemployment approval. What okay, so, um, when I checked uh, Sunday, you are absolutely correct, Annie, and thank you for this question. Um, they are not, so there's a different system, there's a different series of, I guess, uh, questions that need to be resolved um, when you do your application as um, a creative. And so, unfortunately, state hasn't caught up with federal yet. That's still a process, should be ironed out um, in the, um, by the end of the month, I would say um, call to whoever um, is opening your application or doing your application. See if you can get someone on the phone and see what you can do um, in terms of emergency benefits because sometimes they're able to expedite that process on the food share side um, to help out in that regard. Um, so I would try that. Um, and also again, if you're able to, if you're mobile, get to tandem. At least you know you can get something to eat today. Um, and then for Santiago, um, what about for ways for artists to help other artists outside of our personal network? Um, 
I think that's just going to be using social media to put out a call for other artists. I know this weekend, I know a lot of people are starting to do virtual things, so virtual concerts, but also virtual um Lit Milwaukee is doing a virtual event where um, they're selling like candles and things like that. Um, and they're doing that virtually. So those are opportunities as well. Um, I think this is a really cool opportunity to think through um, how do you add virtual spaces into the work that you do. Um, and so Often when I'm looking for people who are not in my personal network, I leverage my personal network to find those people. So if you're looking for other artists, that would be um, a great place to start. And Alec just uh, submitted a, a comment saying they've updated the unemployment insurance guidelines for self-employed freelance this morning. Um, looks like um, folks can start applying April 21st, which totally lines up with what I read online, which is, it would be ready mid to late April. And the website is dwd.wisconsin, spelled out, dot gov, forward slash, u for umbrella, i for igloo, B as in bunny, E as in elephant, N as in Nancy, I don't know, um, forward slash cares with an S act. But honestly, if you just type in Wisconsin unemployment benefits into your search engine, it'll take you to the website and you should be able to find the cares act information. So April 21st, you should be able to apply for that. Annie, I would still circle back and see if there's any way you could expedite the process. Especially if you're in need now, I would, I would try that. Also, don't, don't sleep on food pantries. So food pantries may be that bridge um, until April 21st so that you can um, apply for unemployment and then secure um, the rest of the, or complete the rest of the food share application. Well, Kanita, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. I think these resources were incredibly helpful. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I hope this was helpful to everybody else too. You never really know, but I hope it was. You know how to find me if you need me. Um, be safe. Be safe. And I mean, just try to keep your, your self-care intact because this is a rough time for folks mentally. I am folks. I am folks. So, yes. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you. Check out our fellowship.art website for more of these resources. All right. Thank okay. You guys. Bye. All right. Bye bye.